Hi everyone, this is Erin from Sandpaper Road, and this is our first video of Use What You Have Crafting on a Budget. Now what on earth could you do with a package of strawberries in terms of paper crafting, scrapbooking, card making, or organization? Well, not much with the strawberries, although if you're creative you could think of a few uses, but what about this great container? Well, I've got a bunch of uses that are practical and uh, good for the environment because we're going to save this piece of plastic and will help you organize all kinds of things, make use of this uh, small piece of plastic in ways you could never imagine. So stick around. Hello, peers. What are we going to do with an empty strawberry container in terms of paper crafting, scrapbooking, card making, or just our craft room, we've got so many things we can use with this, do with this little piece of plastic. One of the things I've done with this is to organize my ribbon and my thread because my ribbon and thread storage was crazy. And if you have been scrapbooking, card making, or even if you're crafting, a uh, crafter, if you've been doing it for a while, you've got ribbon and string and this rickrack and everywhere. The little scraps, these little tiny scraps I would keep in baby food jars. I tried to do it by color for a while and I'd store them upside down and that was fine until I got more and more and more and more and more ribbon. And then I thought of the bright idea because I would see everybody's craft room all organized, all nice, like this with the with the rolls all nice. And some people even had the spools, you know what I mean, with the dowel rod through it. And then they could just do this. But And I did that for a while, but the reality is I'm not that kind of a crafter. I'm a for me, I'm a very messy crafter, and so to have it all neat was pretty to look at, but it actually didn't fit my reality, my crafting needs. These trays worked for a great while. These are old medical trays that I got from a nonprofit organization that uh, takes donated supplies from uh, hospitals, and so they had all these trays that once the supplies would come, I don't understand all of the medical stuff, but once the, they would take the supplies out, they would have these trays left. So I had them all lined up in a drawer all nice. But again, if I would use a little piece of the ribbon or cut too much, then I had this little scrap left over or a scrap like this long. And um, it just, it looked pretty, but it wasn't realistic. And then enter strawberry containers of all things. And now, let me get this out of my drawer here. This is what I do now. Now it might look a little strange, but <clears throat> I'm gonna show you. I know some of you are thinking that looks a mess. Well, it fits for me and I just wanted to share it because there might be some other people out there who are frustrated, not just with the organization, but with the reality that you're not, it looks prettier than it actually fits with your needs. And what I did was I just took, some of them are full rolls of ribbon. Some of them are partial rolls. Some of them have come off the roll. Some of them are scraps. For me, this is in no particular order because I'm in my own craft room at home. Maybe if I, if I was gonna redo it, I might do it all by color. But then again, sometimes when you've got all of the same color, then you can't see the colors. I started with this one, and I started to do it with just black. Black, black, and then I thought, you know what? All this black, I'm gonna get lost in all of it. Um, so here I have like a whole thing that came off the roll of black. I've got some rickrack, and I thread it through the bottom and then I can pull off what I need. This I think would be great, especially if I'm going to a crop or if I'm in the middle of a project like making a wedding album or a birthday album or a, uh, you know, some sort of a theme album. I could put together all the ribbon I'm gonna use into one of these and put it in my bag, take it to a crop um, or keep it with my page kit 
And I think that's a really great idea. And you can keep all different kinds, big, little, um, look at all this big ribbon, and you just pull it through the holes. You can have uh, scraps, big or small. This one's a little scrap, and now when it's done, it's done. But in the meantime, it stays together. And um, when I'm ready to, if I didn't want to use it, I was like, oh, dang, it wasn't quite as long as I thought. Then I can just pull this open, and I can pull it through, put it through the top one if I want. Or I can put it through a bottom one if I want, store it upside down or right side up. It doesn't even matter. And it, they fit into dresser drawers or desk drawers um, really nicely. And again, they could you could keep it in your uh, scrapbooking bag or whatever. So that's one of the ways that you can use strawberry containers to help organize your craft area. Another way you can use these empty strawberry containers is um, to use them as storage for die cuts, scraps, or things like that. Now it can be temporary storage or long-term storage. That's kind of up to you. But this this is my problem, and I don't know if, if this is like you or not. I'll make something like this. I die cut a bunch of these um, shapes from, I don't know, cereal boxes or just cracker boxes or whatever on my Sizzix or on my, um, yeah, my, my big shot. And then I thought, uh, I would try to experiment, practice with some stuff. I had some texture paste. I wanted to see if it crackled and it did. And, um, then I wanted to play with the new magicals I got. And then I wanted to play with the new, um, opal magics that I had got and just all kinds of different things. I, I wasn't really interested in using them on projects at the time, but I wanted to keep them all together. And, uh, oh, then I had this deco art, this, um, oh, it was like a, like an Inca gold, kind of a, a, a metallic wax. And I just wanted to try it on this surface, but a bunch of different times. Well, these are pretty nifty shapes, I thought, but they're not all done. I still have some I haven't done anything with. And I'll use them on projects, but in the meantime, I just didn't have a place for them. And sometimes with us crafters, it's kind of out of sight, out of mind. So if I keep them like this, now they're not too small because, you know, these it does have holes. So you can't store anything too, too small. But this is doing uh, pretty good for me. Did you see that? That little star that wanted to come out? And uh, along that same line, this is a big strawberry container, but... I had a bunch of um, larger die cuts, and do you ever have this at card makers where you decide after you've made a bunch of cards that the cards just don't look good to you? They probably look fine to everybody else, but to you they just don't look good, so you kind of take them apart, or you make something and then you're, you know, you make a couple of them, or you make one and you mess up. Anyway, you can keep um, larger pieces, die cuts, things you've stamped, things you've prepped, especially if you're doing things for holidays, um, Christmas cards, if you're doing a bunch of stamping all at once and getting them prepped, you can keep them all together in a nice strawberry container. Um, they travel well. Again, if your pieces aren't too, too small um, to not fall through these slots, this is pretty good. This was for a lot of strawberries. This was just for a little bit. And maybe your uh, grocery store has these for grapes or other fruits. I mean, um, we just eat a lot of strawberries at my house. So uh, die cut storage or uh, small, you know, crafty uh, piece storage is another use for your plastic containers. This might be my favorite, favorite, favorite use of this plastic of all. It is to make stencils and or masks. I love doing this and I've been doing this for a, a while, long enough that it was before um, manufacturers started doing this for us. And uh, I remember thinking, dang it, I wish that they would just make like a stencil for some of these stamps so that I wouldn't have to go in and color because I would be making a lot. So um, this is how you do it if you're interested. Um, you start by coming up with a piece of plastic from your container. Now, <clears throat> These bigger ones, I have to admit, are from, you know, deli containers or takeout containers when you take the leftovers out of a restaurant. So the same thing applies. 
because you may or may not get a big piece of plastic um, depending on your on your size but you just open it up and uh, take your scissors and you can start to just cut right into it with your scissors and cut around and you'll get you can use the top and the bottom and yeah you've got this little thing here but it really doesn't make a difference this little um, recycling thing right there the emblem it doesn't make a difference and it just depends on on the size or whatever that you're trying to make this is one that I had cut just this little bit from a and you know what I wanted I don't know if you could see real real well but um, I just wanted a little heart I just wanted a little heart and I couldn't find like a stencil or something for me to texture paste that just had one I found a lot of them and I didn't feel like masking off with tape so I just wanted one and then the way you do it is you take a um, a self-healing mat and you have that ready make sure it's self-healing and an exacto knife um, of any kind if you have special craft knives I like this uh, knife set by Stanley because um, it's got different tips you can choose from but certainly you don't have to use anything like that and then have that ready and then with your plastic and um, any stamp set that you want then what you do is um, let me show you on the one that I did already okay just to give you a, a an idea I'm not gonna do this all in real time but this is gonna be more like a like a um, how they do on cooking shows where they show you pieces and then bring out the finished one but I put I had a stamp that I wanted that I really liked and then I used um, I used a stays on ink because it it says for every surface it was really good for me on plastic and um, it didn't slide you know uh, how sometimes you'll try to stamp on some sort of slick surface and it'll slide or no matter how long you wait stays on will not do that I have to be honest, I this might do that. Uh, you might have to dry it with a heat gun, but be mindful of heat with plastic because you don't want to warp it either. Um, but this will probably work as well, especially because it's archival, it's permanent, it's waterproof. Just be mindful before you start that it needs to be dry. And you stamp your image right there on a piece of plastic. This is a, a piece of plastic. You stamp it right on there with the ink when you get it up you'll see see the stamped image right there and then you put down um, on your self-healing mat and with your exacto knife you just cut out tape it down maybe with some washi tape or other kind of masking tape cut out just the area that you Imagine that you'd want ink or texture paste or paint or whatever to go through and you could see that I just cut out the area of this uh, flower right there and then that way when I Let's see I could even just show you this real quick I'll show you what's trying to happen Okay, I'm gonna use the archive link And I'll show you what the benefit is of of doing this this way okay now so then then what happens is you've got your stamped image and let's say you're doing a lot of them well now I've got the same image but on a plastic and I know I'm sure you have seen this before because like I said I think manufacturers are now doing it but now you can even oh, let's see what color I have here I'll just use this is just what I'm grabbing because it, it's right in front of me okay and now I can go through and go like this I could probably even do it with the plain old ink pad if I wanted to um, I'm gonna use just this is regular distress ink this was oxide ink you know and um, I could probably just go go right over even if I wanted to like that that wouldn't be my favorite way I like the blenders but so, even so then when you pull it off look at that then you didn't have to uh, color it and it perfectly matches isn't that neat isn't that neat look at that and because they're oxides you can spray them with water they do all kinds of neat things they oxidize so 
that's just another great use for your uh, plastic from your strawberry containers. And you can be very creative. You can do, um, I have one that I did, a, a, just a circle border. Boy, is that handy for cards. I have this one that I uh, stamped just a regular leaf stamp a bunch of times. You can try to run some, this was another uh, stamp from this set, you know, leaves. Just whatever you, this one I just wanted to be able to put texture paste through a bunch of dots. Um, and it was just a regular old hole punch. So um, certainly you can do whatever you uh, have in mind. This was a circle and I just wanted just a circle, just to be able to ink a circle as a, as a background on a card and then do stuff over top without having to glue anything down. But it's up to you, another great use of strawberry containers, the plastic. So what can you do with a strawberry container or a fruit container? You can do lots of things. Um, we Today we talked about storing things in the container, including ribbon, die cuts. Um, this makes great ribbon storage, great for travel, but also how to make um, masks or stencils uh, with the plastic. And I know we didn't talk about masks too much now that I'm just realizing it, um, but a mask would be simply the same exact concept, but the part, let's say you use the part that you cut out of this, you would use the leaf part to put down and then do that same technique of inking around it. That's the mask. And I know that's just a really small, small explanation. Any one of these would do using the mask, the cutout, the punch out, putting that down and inking around it or laying a, a, a painting over top of it, something like that. Um, I really, really hope that you enjoyed this video um, about crafting on a budget, using what you have already on hand. Um, you can save a bunch of these. This is great too if you teach classes that you can take the supplies for one project in one container, big or small. Um, I hope that um, this simple trick will bring new life into your crafting area so that we have more time for actually making things. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Sandpaper Road on YouTube. And don't forget to click on the bell to receive notifications. Also, follow Sandpaper Road on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. And visit Sandpaper Road on Etsy to purchase items or to request custom orders. And share this video with somebody who you think would uh, is is uh, somebody who's into crafting, paper crafting, card making, scrapbooking, or even sewing. I am not a, a, a seamstress, but um, I'm interested to know how you will use strawberry containers for your hobby or craft of choice. In fact, um, leave me a comment if you want, and let me know how you're gonna use strawberry containers. Um, I'm very, very interested to know uh, how you plan to use them more. If you have other ideas for use of these fruit containers, strawberry containers, um, and thanks for watching, and um, see you next time, bye.